I'm Adam Joseph. And I'm Karen Rogers. Tonight on FYI Philly. It's a whole new year. And a whole new season. So that means our very own top 10 list of what's <laughs> new for 2010. From Philadelphia Magazine's top dishes. To the newest places to shop, yeah. eat, sleep over, and call home. Plus open tryouts for the newest game in town. It's an FYI for you starting now. Welcome to FYI Philly. It's 2010. Can you believe it? And FYI Philly is back. We are very excited and we're looking forward to a whole new season of finding the latest, greatest, newest, hottest, and hippest trends right here in Philadelphia. This is a tall order, yeah, right? Really. Well, you'll notice that we're not in our usual spot. We thought we'd showcase our top 10 list for 2010 in one of the city's most talked about dining spots, Distrito. Fabulous mm -hmm. year. Adam and I were both saying we love it. Yes. It was named Best New Restaurant by Philly Mag last year and is the modern Mexican hotspot in University City owned by Chef Jose Garcia. And don't you mean, as you see right behind us here, the newly crowned Iron Chef Jose Garcia. I love the Food Network and he won that title just mm. a few weeks ago and we send our congratulations to him. He's definitely one to watch this year because he's been a major force in our number one to watch. Philly's ever-growing restaurant scene. You'd be amazed at what's open just in the last month. There are more than 3,000 eateries in and around the region with cuisine as diverse as the residents. Vast helpings of these restaurants are critically acclaimed on the national scene. Add to that a pound of expert chefs manning the kitchens, a big spoonful of super successful restaurant tours, a smattering of fabulous real estate, and a mound of eager clientele. You get a recipe for a restaurant scene that keeps getting bigger and better. Our friends at Philadelphia Magazine devoted their January cover story to listing the top 239 dishes you can find in our region. If you start today, it would take almost till September to experience all of them. It's kind of a celebration of both the instant classics, new restaurants that have something on their menu that instantly became part of Philadelphia's food scene, but also pays homage to the places that have been around for 20, 30 years that continue to have such good food. It's basically the type of dishes that if people took off their menu, Philadelphia diners would riot. We hear Jose Garces has a lot of dishes on the list, 13 to be exact, Karen. And I am not leaving here until I try every one of them. And here to tell us about them is Tim Spinner. Tim is the chef here at Distrito. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Good, thanks. Hey, how Tim. You, guys doing? So, you know, any project that Jose Garces dives into, it seems like he hits the jackpot. He does. You know, I, he's not only the Iron Chef, he's also the Golden Chef. You know, he, he has such a magical vision, and he does an amazing job. Yeah, mm. and they look gorgeous too, right? These are three of the dishes that actually made mm. the list, so tell us about them. Okay, first over here we have our lengua tacos, or our tongue tacos. Ooh, tongue tacos. Uh, right in the middle we have our los hongos huarache, or wild mushroom flatbread. Mm. If I were a vegetarian, I had one more meal to eat on this earth. That would be that's it. What it would be. <laughs> and over here we have our nachos in carcion, or our, our skirt steak nachos. Mm. Ooh, skirt that steak. That sounds, sounds good, good too. Good. All right, I got my eye on this for the commercial break. You can pig out right now. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Tim, Thank for talking Thank to you us. Guys. We appreciate it. We're going to see more later mm. and taste more. Taste more? Yeah. Sounds good to me. And well, number one was the amazing food scene, of course. So no surprise as I chow down. <laughs> number two is the Philadelphia chef. She has been propelled into stardom due to her stint on the top-rated reality TV competition show. Yeah, that's right. Her celebrity is bringing even more notoriety to an already top-tier establishment. We visited Jennifer Carroll, chef de cuisine of Ten Arts Restaurant at the Ritz Carlton during a photo shoot for Wear Magazine. It was all hair, makeup, for this culinary whiz from Northeast Philadelphia. Posing was no problem, but her real forte is filleting a 30 pound striped bass. But that's not what she grew up eating. I grew up eating Hungry Jack potatoes, the box potatoes, and well done steaks because that's what my dad loved when we were growing up. She attended the restaurant school in Philly, worked hard for years, and headed up to New York City to work with a master chef to seriously hone her skills. I worked at Le Bernardin with Eric Repair for five years, became sous chef there. And then he asked me when he was opening this restaurant here in, Te in the Ritz-Carlton to be the chef here, and I jumped at the chance. That led to a recent stint on the popular Bravo cable series, Top Chef. Top Chef was crazy. It was definitely intense, stressful, but 
fun at the same time. She won several challenges and almost nabbed the title. But she's certainly a champ on the Philly restaurant scene, knocking out top-notch cuisine day in and day out. Top Chef was great for myself here at the hotel. There's so many people coming in. It's great for my servers. It's just a whole new energy. So if you notice the stylist for Jennifer Carroll, her name is Sarah Van Aken, mm -hmm. and her new Center City Boutique comes in at number three on our list. That's right, and it will have you looking stylish in totally eco-chic fashion. On 17th and Sampson Street, Savah Boutique is a fashionista's find. One of the things that I love about it is that every single outfit that you see, there's something on it that's sustainable. I mean, that brings eco-friendly to just a whole new level, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was one of the most exciting and I think unique things about what we do is that we're bringing sustainability and high fashion together uh, at mid price point. So 65% of what we sell in the store, we actually design and manufacture right upstairs. And anything else that um, is sold in the store has one element of sustainability so it might be organic fabric it might be that it's local made it might be fair trade but we really are careful about who we buy from and, and the types of products we buy now on to the must-have looks what they've been selling a lot of are these layering pieces so you'll see Love sort of so a much. very drapey sweater Fun. it might be paired with a tube scarf you know or two scarves like this right. that you you layer over it with maybe a t-shirt underneath and a pair of wide leg pants and so it's very cozy and drapey. This is our Lynn blouse, which is a silk trim mousse blouse. It's really great because it's long enough to wear with leggings. You can wear it belted or unbelted. Make your money count. Invest in these high-end, multi-purpose accessories. This is actually a Kristen Kelly belt. You can wear it in a bunch of different looks. This was hand beaded for us in a cottage industry in India, and the fabric is organic cotton. How could shopping get even more fun? Well, you're shopping locally, so you're supporting local businesses. It's made right here, and it's eco-friendly. Can't beat that. So now you're looking sharp. You're ready to go, but how about a date? Me? Not you. You. You know what I mean. How about a date, right? Well, you might want to meet number four on our list, a Philadelphia duo. So dynamic, listen to this, they've yeah. hit the national spotlight. Yeah, the professional matchmakers who give frank advice on the dating game, and now they have some take-home tips for all of us, mm. including you. Cheers. Meet mother and son team, Stephen and Joanne Ward, owners of Master Matchmakers. My mom started Master Matchmakers in Philadelphia, which has now grown uh, to have more than 3,500 members throughout the entire mid-Atlantic. Their regional business has been creating sparks for couples for 20 years. I love matchmaking. It's um, it's a great skill. Um, I love it. Stephen inherited it. And uh, the business just kept growing and growing ever since Stephen came on board. And, and it just hasn't stopped. Especially since Steve became the host of the hit VH1 reality show, Tough Love, now in its second season. Welcome to Tough Love Boot Camp. My mom and I have a lot of work to do. It was exciting to know that we created enough of an interest and what we do to, to warrant a second season, another chance to do it again. 20,000 women applied to get some help with their dysfunctional dating habits, but only eight were chosen. Now the wards offer some tips for everyone in a new book called Crash Course in Love. It's about finding, dating, and keeping the one. The tips include... You know what? You just got to be positive, and you have to be happy, and, you know, you have to enjoy life. You have to smile a lot. Flirting is very important, but, you know, the, the, the keystone to flirting is communication. Keeping is very important. You must keep the relationship exciting at all times. You know, um, no matter how fresh it is or how old it is, you have to keep it exciting. You want to reinvent your relationship every single day. You have to remind that person why they want to be with you and why you want to be with them. Great tips from the experts to get out there and make love happen in 2010. Those were some great tips for finding new love. Yeah, and if you could believe it, that's just four out of our top ten. So, can you guess what's coming up? All I can tell you, Karen, is that Center City continues to dazzle us. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, three new hotspots you're going to want to check out. Sounds good to me. We'll be right back. <laughs>